and welcome to freephotoshop.com and this week's video tutorial on how to save an image as a JPEG. So when do we use the JPEG format? Well JPEG stands for the Joint Photographic Experts Group who developed it not only into a format but a standard as well. You'll find JPEGs most useful when saving an image with lots of gradual transitions and a wide range of colour, saturation and luminance. So we're talking photographs and images with shadows and glows and the like. I've got this image open on screen called keddingtonchurch.psd which means that the file format is currently a Photoshop document. And if I bring the info palette into view here, you'll see that the document is just over 20 megabytes in size. Now the combination of 20 megabytes and a PSD file isn't always ideal. In fact, pretty much all digital cameras process photographs as JPEGs simply because a JPEG file is relatively small and it's a tried and tested format. OK, I'm going to come up here to the File menu and select Save As. And inside the Save As dialog box, I'm going to choose the desktop as my location to save the file. I'm going to leave the name of the file as is, and then I'm going to change the format down here in the drop down box to JPEG. Now once I click the Save button, I get the JPEG Options dialog box where I get to optimize the image. Starting at the top here, I get a matte option. Now that's only going to be available if we've got areas of transparency in the image. One of the negatives associated with JPEG format is that it doesn't support transparency. So whatever colour mat you choose here will replace the transparent areas of the image. Underneath the matte option we have our quality controls and this is where you'll want to focus your attention. Something that's very important to realise with JPEG is that it's a lossy format which means that it's literally discarding information as it compresses it. With the quality set to 12, you're retaining the most information and therefore saving the best version of the image. As you lower the quality, you're compressing the image more and more. And whilst you're lowering the file size, you're seeing more and more artifacting caused by the JPEG compression. And you may have noticed that while I'm changing the quality of the image, Photoshop is calculating on the fly the resulting JPEG file size down here at the bottom. It also gives me an approximation of how long the resulting file size will take to load up over an internet connection, which in turn depends on what speed connection I've got entered in this drop down box here. So let's say I'm going to want the best quality, so I change the quality setting to 12, and I want to send the file over a 1 megabit per second connection. So I know from here that it will take around 50 seconds for the file to be downloaded. You've also got four presets in the drop down box ranging from maximum to low quality. My advice is to always save the best quality settings. Next we have three different formats available within the JPEG umbrella. Baseline standard is the original way to save a JPEG. Baseline optimized is a newer version of the standard. It claims to create slightly smaller files with better color support, and that's the one I usually go for. Finally, there's a progressive version, which was used back in the days when the 28 kilobit per second dial-up connections were around, and this allows an image to be scanned onto a web page in a low resolution version, so it shows up quickly with a slow web connection. The preceding scans then add detail to the image until the final scan reveals the image in its entirety. This used to be a really good way of getting rid of them white holes on your web page whilst you wait for the whole image to load up. OK, I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of this, and if you're wanting to save this image for the web, then your best bet is to come over here to the File menu and select Save for Web. Now the options you get here are exactly the same as standard JPEG dialog box but you do get an extra option designed to reduce the file size of an image and that's this blur slider over here. Because of the way JPEG compresses an image it handles large transitions far more efficiently than sharp changes in contrast. Therefore if you're saving for the web and wanting to save file size everywhere you can then you can choose to add a slight amount of blur to the image in order to reduce its overall file size. 
Another quick tip for reducing the file size of a JPEG is to lower its saturation, which can be done inside the Hue Saturation dialog box inside Photoshop. If you're saving the file for the web, then you're going to want to reduce the file size as much as possible, whereas if you're saving a photograph for emailing or storing on disk, then you're going to want to try and maintain as much quality as possible. OK, well I hope you found this tutorial on freephotoshop.com to be helpful. Thanks very much for watching.